Hey, what's up, nerds? Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall, and today we are going to look at some Math Hammer basics. I wanted to do this for a while now, uh, revisiting the very basics of the Math Hammer concepts and uh, kind of refresh it and update with some new ideas that I've had, some tweaks that I've made to my approach and share all of that with you guys. It's been quite a while since I really kind of did a, a top to bottom math hammer video. So I'm going to do a short series on this that kind of goes step by step through the different uh, aspects of math hammering things and uh, what we can use it for, why we use it, etc. So what is math hammer overall the idea is that we're going to use math to evaluate units and tactics within the game that is on the board in list building etc the big thing that i like to focus on is finding average performance so that you can come up with a reasonable expectation of, on average, how this unit's going to perform. And with the law of large numbers on our side, we can identify what things that happen are outliers versus what your typical outcomes should be. Uh, more on law of large numbers a little bit later. I'm going to go into that in a little bit more detail. Um, there's also more advanced methods that you can use to actually calculate out the distribution so you can see how often different results are going to come up. Um, that's not something that I usually get too far into. Um, I believe there are some tools available online. Um, I'll try and find those and uh, talk about them later on for everybody. But that's really sort of taking the law of large numbers concept and kind of spreading it out and seeing um, like, yes, this is what the average is, but here's how frequently uh, all of the things outside of the average happen. So that you have a better idea of uh, performance on an average basis within um, a certain tolerance, so to speak. So rather than saying this unit does 10 wounds on average, you can say that, you know, X percent of the time it's going to be between 8 and 12. And that will give you a little bit better of an idea of what to really expect from a unit. Because so there are factors that are going to really uh, skew the distribution. Um, and the average doesn't necessarily tell the whole story. And... As we go on, I'm going to talk about that more in general. I'm not going to get into the mathy math of that, but it's something that we need to think about. One of the big things that I really use Math Hammer for is comparing your unit performance to the points you pay for it, and then comparing that between similar unit choices or similar unit roles. So we're really looking for efficiency for a particular aspect of what a unit does. Now, in more recent years, really since um, I think I did the original Math Hammer videos, Games Workshop has implemented an algorithm for determining points values. And that really has smoothed out a lot of the abnormalities we saw earlier in Age of Sigmar when it was a little bit more sort of licking your finger and feeling the wind and seeing uh, what point values should be. So now it's much more tightly regulated, but we can still use our own math hammer to look at the things that we're particularly interested in because the... Uh, all of the aspects of a unit are factored into their points value and we're not necessarily always interested in all of the different things that are in that formula. 
So again, why are we doing this? The We just talked about the Games Workshop formula, the algorithm that they're using for coming up with points values. I don't know if anyone has actually reverse engineered this algorithm yet, but we know in general that it's going to include, you know, your damage output, your range of weapons, your uh, wounds, your bravery, your movement, all of the characteristics of the unit that are mathematical are going to get uh, added into that formula, and then special rules will be sort of an adjustment after that. So, as I mentioned before, the algorithm takes into account everything on the War Scroll, and we're not always interested in everything on the War Scroll. So, we can often compare two units that are going to have some differences between them, but their central role that we're looking at is going to effectively be the same. So, you're going to have something with, say, um, um, maybe is a dwarf with movement four versus an elf with movement six. Well, that elf, all things considered, should probably be pointed higher because it has more movement if everything else is the same. But if all you care about, say, is their damage output from shooting, well, then their movement is not nearly as important. So that dwarf unit that is less mobile may be of greater value to you because it's going to be costed a little bit less because uh, the movement is factored into Games Workshop's formula. Also, this algorithm is not perfect. Like, you can't uh, perfectly math out what all of these units do because there's so many uh, really difficult to quantify aspects of a war scroll so we find imperfections in the formula um and we can use those imperfections to be exploits for us to find for the specific things that we're looking for what units may actually be under or over costed for the role that we're looking at so really the best uses that I have found for Math Hammer in this contemporary environment now that we have that Games Workshop is using an algorithm for their points calculations. We can compare units that are similar to find the best value when there's not that much different. Um, a really good example of this is in the Cities of Sigmar book, there's a whole bunch of things, both shooting units and your melee units where there's very similar war scrolls that have different points values and some differences within those and we can make comparisons across them to see you know which things that we're emphasizing that we're interested in where do we get the best value out of those um and the big thing that you always want to use Math Hammer for is anticipating your tabletop outcomes. So that when you make attacks with a unit, you have realistic expectations of how that unit should perform. It's really a predictive sort of analytic that we're, we want to know what our units are going to do before they go on the table. We don't want to play a guessing game about it. We want to be able to have... Uh, a quick thought in our head of exactly how much damage, for example, a unit is going to do in combat, or how much uh, damage it's going to be able to absorb in combat, how long it's going to be able to grind out against your opponent. Those are really important things in playing the game, and, you know, it changes how you play with knowing what your expectations of a unit should be. So I mentioned before law of large numbers, and this is a statistics and probability concept, 
essentially the idea is when you have a probabilistic event like rolling dice, which is like the most common example that you'll ever get in a statistics and probability class, um, you're going to get this concept going that the more trials that happen, the closer the average outcome is going to be to the mathematical average. So, in other words, the more r dice you roll, the more average your outcome is going to be. Whether that is from uh, rolling a lot of dice in one attack, or if you're just looking at the performance of something over a lot of games, uh, it's going to give you a good idea of what your expectations should be over the broader scheme. Um, the, the very important thing to remember here is, is that when you're looking at averages, you're really looking at, um, like the snapshot of the middle. And as I talked about before, we need to also look at the minimum and the maximum and what the distribution across all outcomes actually looks like. Um, I don't really go that deep into the math very often, but I, there's some ways that you can get a good general feeling of how that works out, which I'll talk about in later videos. Um, this is a very important concept to keep in mind when you're looking at attacks versus damage. That's your uh, big area where your distributions are going to get a little wonky. Um, and not necessarily get an average that is um, going to have like a, a low standard deviation. But that's all a little bit more complex math concepts that we can get into more later on. I just wanted to kind of give you guys a primer for now on what we're going to be talking about, and we'll get into the nitty-gritty math later on. So as always, like and subscribe for more Math Hammer content. I'm going to be doing a series on this, getting into all of the different facets of Math Hammer. Uh, so make sure you turn on your notifications so you can see when all of the new videos come up. And as always, if you'd like to support us on Patreon, we put 100% of our proceeds back into the channel to uh, help provide better content. Ah, no, my dog's coming for a visit. <laughs> anyway, I'll talk to you all later.